Hello and good evening from the South Coast, where one of the country's most iconic venues that hosted games featuring British basketball stars such as Herman Harid, Colin Irish, the late great Billy Hungrecker, Steve Nelson, Alfredo Ott and Zaire Taylor plays host to a new generation of stars that so far are leaving their mark in NBL Division One. Worthing Thunder and Hemel Storm are both unbeaten, 9-0 and 8-0 respectively, and they meet for the first time tonight for what could be the first chapter in a legendary rivalry all of its own. Good evening, everybody. Once more, John Hobbs, Niall Gray here from the Worthing Leisure Centre. And Niall, as mentioned, the two unbeaten teams in the league. This is possibly the most anticipated game in the British basketball calendar so far this season. Oh, oh indeed, John. And when you said to me early season, come and see a National League game, you know, you couldn't have picked a better game tonight because these two teams have been on absolute fire this season. They're top of the table and one of them has to take a loss this evening. Absolutely. And, you know, both teams not just unbeaten in the league, they also will meet in the Kit King Trophy Final in March at Surrey Sports Park. They are also still in National Cup contention as well. So unbeaten in all competitions. So this takes on slightly a bigger meaning than just the league. We're going to go to the team starting with the Worthing Thunder. As we just uh, sort out a few a technical issue, but now we'll go to the team sheet starting with the Worthing Thunder and there is one name that is not in that uh, list, and that is number 22, Brendan Okoronkwo, who makes his debut for his second spell with the club tonight. Of course, Brendan, a former Solent Kestrels player, and now back with the Worthing Thunder. But uh, a strong lineup, almost like a who's who of all stars, right there, Niall. No, it's, it, it's two great teams, John. I mean, I'm looking. Obviously, I have BBL experience. I'm looking guys at like Orland and Jackman. I mean, these, some of these guys have played against Sorry Scorchers when I commentated on them. When obviously Andrew Arasol was one of them. Guys, I mean, Ronald Blaine and David Moy, I remember watching, was it Team Newcastle yeah. last season playing for them in the trophy, was it the trophy final? Yeah, no, uh, the uh, cup final. Yeah, a couple of great players. I mean, the scoring options they give Zaire Taylor. Absolutely. And going to the uh, Hemel Storm now and... There is no Cavill Hawes, number zero for Hemel tonight, but still a very strong lineup, led, of course, by Taylor Johnson and Seth Suave and Aaron Rye. Three big scorers there. Hemel have been blowing out teams by double digits all season long. Yeah. Tonight, this will no doubt be their toughest test. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Taylor Johnson. Again, I have to use the same perspective, but he played for <laughs> Thames Valley a few years ago. Yep. And he almost beat the Scorchers that night. He was absolutely fantastic. Great player. And obviously, the second season with Hemel now, what a great pickup he's been. That was the, the night that uh, a certain Cameron Hildreff made his debut for the Surrey Scorchers in that game. Got the game winner, if I'm not mistaken, of course. Oh, indeed, yes. Of course, a, a product of the uh, Amring Cobras. And then, of course, moving on to the Sussex Storm, or Crawley Storm, as they are now called, HTS. And now, of course, plying his trade with Wake Forest, recently got a triple-double in um, one of their uh, last games. So, Yeah, no, he's, he's really come on the season. Of course, Absolutely. he joined Surrey from Worthing. Yeah. So great addition to the team he was from that season. Now it's, of course, what we call a lockout year as such, in the sense that there are no fans at the games, but tremendous addition to the team. But I'm really excited about this game, John. There's a really good crowd in tonight. Fantastic atmosphere. There always is at the Worthing Leisure Centre. Rain, shine or thunder or storm, they are here in their hundreds and uh, very enthusiastic. There's a small travelling section of Hemel Storm fans also here today. And if you've just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel, welcome everybody. Great to have you on board. And we'll get to the uh, starting five, starting with the Worthing Thunder. They'll be rolling with Ronald Blaine, David Moyer, Andre Arasol, Orlan Jackman and Tom Ward for the Hemel Storm. They're going with Akeem Silla, Sam Newman, Seth Suave, Taylor Johnson and Aaron Rye. 
A new look for the Worthing Thunder, new branding, new logo, new colours. And right now, yet to taste defeat this season. And Hemel Storm themselves unbeaten. Someone is going to have number one on the right side of their statistics this season. I mean, it's only December, John, but this game could prove pivotal at the end of it. Absolutely. An early Christmas present is the statement win that will go a long way to determining who they could, who could reach the top two in NBL Div 1. Here we go. Orlan Jackman and Akeem Silla tip it up and Taylor Johnson gets the first possession straight away. Here is Johnson again getting it back from Newman and Akeem Silla picks up the Bruce pieces. Yeah, right time, right place for Akeem Silla. Taylor is looking really aggressive. He's going, wants to go at them from the start. Lane in the uh, unconventional role of point guard at the moment. Here is Moya from the corner. And Silla with the rebound. Here is Suave. Suave running into trouble but finds Johnson being marked by Ward. Kicks it out. The extra pass is Aaron Rye, but Aaron Rye, I think, stepped out of bounds. Just, I think both teams just look a little bit nervy at the beginning, Hemel especially. Jackman finds Arasol inside. Here is Blaine driving at Rye. What a matchup that will be tonight between the two highest efficiency players in the NBL. Here is Rye. Finds Silla inside. Good defense there from Worthing. Silla has it back again and Arasol rebounds. Putting a lot of tension on him, don't want to let him get another bucket under the basket. Moya. Tom Ward backing down Suave. The turnaround jumper for Ward is short. Worthing a little bit rusty offensively. Taylor Johnson fouled hard by Moya. And Taylor Johnson still on the floor. Taking in a hole, got Drew the foul off the line for two. He's fine. And Taylor Johnson, who had 23 points, seven boards last week in Hemel's latest league win against the uh, Nottingham Hoods. 15 of those 23 came in the third quarter, so. Bit of a late bloomer to that game, but Taylor Johnson misses the first. And you were saying, Noel, off camera, before we went on air, Taylor Johnson, probably one of the best scorers, not just in the NBL, but in British basketball, period. Yeah, they used to call a guy many years called uh, Vinnie Johnson back in the Detroit days, called him microwave because he heat up in a hurry. And Taylor Johnson is one of those sort of players, when he gets a streak going, he can put plenty of points on the board. Lane, Lane muscling his way inside. And Ronald Blaine will go to the foul line. Of course, Ronald Blaine in his first season with the Thunder went all the way up north playing for Team Newcastle last season. Now making his home on the south coast. guy that can score in a multitude of ways Ronald Blaine just like Taylor Johnson can as well and you have the added bonus that Ronald Blaine is six foot eight it's not helped him with the free throw so far though <laughs> gets uh, the splits the second so Thunder off the mark albeit the single point from the foul line Rye Suave thought about the three Ward Played good D, perimeter D on him, and a travel was called. But as you said, Niall, so far a cagey opening from both teams, it must be said. There's, there's a lot of state, John. I just wonder if it's just take him a few minutes to get into their stride. Hemel one for four, Worthing zero for two from the field in the first two minutes. Jackman, Ward, 
likes the pull up instead, goes inside and short with his floater. Rye, ball comes off his feet and Ward comes up with it. Yeah, Hemel back with the numbers. Arasol from the corner. Arasol strings a three. That'll get them going, gives them their first lead. First field goal and an offensive foul's been called. Loose ball foul, it's on Akeem Silla. That happened just around the uh, half court area, so Thunder will get the ball back. Ward loves that corner too, and that's why. Worthing starting to get going now. Aaron Rye. Newman. Sets his feet, puts a three up and puts it in. Sam Newman getting going, Arasol to the races. Probably a bit out of control with his layup. And here is Rye. A lot of the ball handling coming through. Aaron Rye, back to back threes. Seth Suave this time from the other corner. As soon as he put that shot up, his teammates on the bench, they knew that one was going in. Blaine, Arasol. Driving, gets a bit of room and banks it home. Just got a tiny little bit of space. There's enough needed to get it in. And all of a sudden, from a cagey start, both teams finding their rhythm. Inside to Johnson, and he scores. The pace is furious right now. This has gone from 0 to 60 in no time Absolutely. at all. Absolutely, Arasol lays it up and in. Field goals wherever you go right now. Rye. Rye goes inside and scores. Not like they're playing basketball on a court. It's like they're playing street ball right now. Isaiah won't be happy that a lot of points have been scored right by the basket. Hemel up 13 to 10. Jackman slows it down. Jackman going to the gym inside. Misses his two. Fights with Rye for the board. Misses the layup again. And Asilla stole it off him, and here comes Suave. That will help his rebound numbers. Just couldn't convert. Johnson wide, open three. That's off to the left. Silla kicks it out. Newman, a three. And Jackman rebounds. Blaine. Both of these guys going oh. at each other. Blaine and a foul. The pace is so furious right now. As you see, Ronald Blaine going to work on Aaron Rye. Aaron Rye loses his footing, connects with Blaine. And Blaine says, thank you very much. An incredible start to this game, Niall. So much for us saying that both teams were cagey, because as soon as we said that... But well, we, did, we did say it would burst on. into life. Yeah, it did burst into life. We said it would happen. These two teams are too good to play like that for too long. They made a lot of noise with their signings in the summer, and they're making it true so far this season. And my goodness me, what a start we've had to this game. Ball came off Rye last, it will be a Worthing ball. Tied up at 13, halfway through the first quarter. Moyer, putting the moves on Suave, kicks it out. Hafiz Abdul in the corner. <laughs> Worthing Thunder now two for three from downtown. Oh, sloppy pass. Sloppy pass indeed. Suave still has it. Seven to shoot. Suave kicks it out. Johnson, a finger roll. Oh, great from Tay Johnson to follow on the play. And he was there when the play broke down. Blaine. Bit of a mismatch with Sam Newman, goes inside. Chapman gets the rebound, muscles his way in and scores. <laughs> 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 it's 
Suave. Good defence there from Jackman. Finds Silla for the easy score. And that's the problem when you have Jackman defending so far out. It leaves a mismatch and Silla was up against David Moyer. That was the result. They used the size advantage well. Arasol wide open. Strings another three. And already for Andre Arasol, he's two for two from downtown. Thunder shooting around 47% so far from the field. Suave looking for options, finds it in Rye. And Aaron Rye answers back with a three of his own. Second in the NBL in three point percentage. The Hemel Storm at 40%. Only Newcastle have a higher percentage than Hemel. Blaine. Arasol finds a Fies Abdul in the corner. It's a three-point party. Rye driving. Offensive foul called. A Fies Abdul putting his body on the line for the cause. Worthing couldn't put the ball in the basket in the first couple of minutes, and now they're on on course for uh, over 100 points. As you see there, the replay of Aaron Rye just going a bit too deep into the body of uh, Hafiz Abdul. And Aaron Rye will now take a seat. And Charles Aqua Davis comes in for his first taste of action tonight. Of course, the former Thames Valley Cavaliers man in his first season with Hemel. Nearly stole the ball off Blaine. Jackman going to work on Silla. Easy work for Orlan Jackman. That's a play I've seen many times over the years from Orlan. Just veteran court awareness. And Orlan Jackman with the easy score. Inside to Oyafusi who misses the layup. I think a foul has been called. An offensive foul has been called on Teo Oyafusi. They're starting to mount up on Hemel. They're Absolutely. just losing their way just a little bit. Because they were the team that started the stronger in that slow opening. As Brendan Okoronkwo will come in for the first time tonight. As David Moyer takes a seat. Jackman makes the first foul shot. Orlan Jackman now on five points. Andre Arasol leads all scorers with ten so far. Jackman splits the free throws. Hafiz Abdul inside. And a travel has been called. So Orlan Jackman will take a seat. Brendan Okoronkwo will come into the game for the first time. Okoronkwo, who has been playing for the Division Three team, uh, this season, now making his debut for the Division One side. Of course, Solent Kestrel fans, alongside Worthing Thunder fans, will know all about uh, Brendan Okoronkwo. Arasol steals it off Johnson, and now Arasol off to the races. He lays it up and in. Thunder lead by nine, with 1.45 remaining in the first. And a steal by Okoronkwo. Hemel just losing their way a little bit offensively. You can see Hemel calling a timeout at some point. It, they don't want to let the game get away from this early. Whoa, the two! Timeout, Drew Spinks. He's seen enough. And Worthing Thunder have raced out to an 11 point lead with 127 remaining in the first quarter on the back of that Tom Ward long two. And Worthing, who throughout the season have been using full court pressure defense to stifle their opponents, force them into errors, are doing the same thing here to the Storm. And it's paying dividends, a double-digit lead for them. And Hemel now in 
uncharted territory so far this season for them. They are behind by double digits. Yeah, it, it, it's two good, it's two really good teams. And one thing I've got to mention, you mentioned about Andy Arasol, he's on Andrew, Andre Arasol, they say, he's on 12 points now. Once he got going, Worthing just went off the races. It just seemed to pump, every, lift everybody up. Absolutely, and both teams, you know, shooting at a high 50% from the field but Worthing right now really making the turnovers count Hemel haven't scored a single point off any Worthing turnovers Worthing have scored 11 points off their tur off Hemel's turnovers right now and you can see that it reflects happily in the score yeah the way Worthing been playing in the last six or seven minutes it's a very deserved lead for them I mentioned about Drew Spinks possibly calling a timeout, and as soon as I'd said it, I could see him at the corner of my walking table saying, this goes in, I want a timeout. Because they just need to rearrange things, get themselves going again. Just a As case of just slow your offence down, and Oyafusi nearly lost the ball there. Taylor Johnson against Okoronkwo, kicks it out, Oyafusi likes the three-pointer, and that's why. Just what you want, straight out of a timeout, get some much-needed points on the board. A 43% three-point shooter for the season in Teo Oyafusi. Of course, won the uh, playoff title in 2019 with the Solent Kestrels before retiring for the year and coming back to Hemel. Hafiz Abdul misses everything and now a much-needed stop for the Storm and Aqua Davis with the lay-in. Charles Aqua Davis's first field goal. Here is Hafiz Abdul loses the ball, but a uh, foul has been called. Yeah. Chance to get some points because that 11 point lead has shrunk to six very, very quickly. We've still got 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. Absolutely, and Hemel uh, in the penalty, so Hafiz Abdul will go to the foul line for the Thunder. Hafiz Abdul looking for his third straight double-double tonight in the league. So far not doing a bad job, six points. Two for two from the field, but uh, just the one rebound so far. It's double-double Hakeem uh, Hakeem's here. He's yeah. the guy, isn't he? Mr. Double-double when it Absolutely. comes to... Absolutely. Five straight double-doubles in NBL Div 1 for Hakeem Silla. And he actually didn't get a double-double uh, last week. He um, Still averaging one for the season, though, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Still averaging it's 14 and 11 so far. So there's about a six-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Taylor Johnson and a foul. In fact, no, an offensive yeah, foul has been yeah, it's called. it's gone against Hemel again. The Hemel bench are on their feet, but uh, the referee called an offensive foul. As Moyer will check back into the game for the final 13 seconds. And Ronald Blaine takes a seat. So Worthing going small for their final possession, Okoronkwo. Uh, Sam Newman anticipated the pass between Okoronkwo and Ward, who know each other very very well they've played together for many years but Sam Newman anticipated that final possession Moyer a three in and out and that ends a frantic first quarter here at the Worthing Leisure Centre and tempers just fraying a little bit here referees just settling it down and both teams go to their benches but Worthing Thunder lead 32 to 25 in a high scoring, fast paced, action packed first period that has yeah. had right. so much. Both teams shooting at a high percentage, around the 50% mark for both teams. Andre Arasol leading all scorers with 12 points. Taylor Johnson and Aaron Roy both have five to leave, lead Hemel. But it's been pure excitement and what a fun game so far for the neutral oh absolutely I've, I've enjoyed it immensely I mean start like we had that little slow start but we knew that wasn't going to stay like that and once 
Andrea Arosel started getting the offense going for, for Worthing, both teams suddenly took off. And we had a situation uh, early on where Hemmer will get into the basket quite a lot. And Zaire Taylor wasn't happy about that. Of course, he has got his players defend the hoop better. And of course, what's happened? Offensive foul after offensive foul after yeah. offensive foul. And he's got to be a lot happier with how his team are playing defense. OK, he's given up 25 points, but they've got 32. Absolutely. So they're in a good position. And also as well, you know, for Worthing, you mentioned the offensive fouls. They got Hemmel in foul trouble very early on. And as the game winds down, that's going to be a huge, huge problem for Drew Spinks. Yeah, the only good thing is, looking at the stat sheet, the, the fouls have been spread around. So they've not they've got any players who are desperately um, in foul trouble in this early going. Uh, Hakim Silla, he, could, he got to the hoop quite easily early on in that first quarter. But towards the end, he couldn't. They were shutting him out of the basket completely. Absolutely. And uh, as we are edging closer to the second quarter. Just to let everyone know that it is National Cup Finals weekend coming up in January, the 21st and 22nd. And the National Basketball Performance Center will be the venue hosting the juniors on the Saturday and the seniors on the Sunday. There'll be new names carved into the legendary National Cup trophies. And who will be those teams? Of course, the Stockport Lapwings. Fairy tale came to an end against Bristol in the women's sector. And of course, Worthing defeated last season's champions, the Solent Kestrels, last week. Of course, Worthing and Hemel still in National Cup action. So who knows, they might meet again this time in Manchester. You'll find out on the 21st and 22nd of January. Get your tickets, basketballengland.co.uk. As we start the second quarter, Aaron Rye putting the moves on Jackman, kicks it out as the shot clock expires. Taylor Johnson puts in a three. Yeah, did, did well just to get his man in the air, improve his position, and he had a clean look at the basket. Eight points now for Johnson. He's played all nearly 11 minutes of this game. Poor pass from Moyer, and it goes out of bounds for a Hemel possession. You could see what Moyer was doing, looking for the open man in Afiz Abdul, but his pass just a little bit too off. The Hemel have looked a lot better since that Drew Spinks timeout in the first quarter. Suave, good defense there from Moyer, redeeming himself and a thunderball. To be fair though, John, I don't think he had to stretch that far to get. He literally just put the ball right by him. It's the easiest block ever. David Moyer at uh, six foot and Seth Suave at uh, around the 5'10", 5'11", Mark. Arasola three, that's short. And a foul has been called. It's a rare that's miss on, for him. Yeah, that's on Hafiz Abdul. That is uh, Arasol's first miss from downtown tonight. He made his first two before that. Aqua Davis finds Rye, who again lost the ball as he was uh, backing down Jackman. And Hemmer will get the ball back as Veron Ezzi will come into the game for the first time. Veron, who played in the Division Three game earlier as Worthing Thunder's second team beat London United. Now checking in for his first taste of the action here tonight. Here is Johnson. Good defense from Ezzi and a turnover, a shot clock violation. Great defense oh. there from Veron Ezzi and from Worthing Thunder as a whole. They got two guys on him and he just gave Tay Johnson nowhere to go. He had to shoot it. He realized he couldn't, but the pass is too late. You've just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Get your comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Basketball England YouTube channel. Turn over there, poor pass from Moyer, picked off by Suave, and he's off to the races. Cut there from Johnson, but he missed the ball. The extra pass to Rye, Rye going inside. 
find Suave marked by Jackman. Rye, an open three is short. And Moya jumped over Aqua Davis at a much taller Charles Aqua Davis for that ball. That's but Neville will get possession back. Yeah, it's a lovely little pass into the corner. If that shot had gone in, we'd have been seeing a replay of that over and over again. Charles Aqua Davis at 6 6. Oya Fusi. Really doing a great job of harassing Hemel. Five to shoot. Johnson doesn't get the ball to go and a foul has been called. Jackman fell to the floor hard. But Orlan Jackman, a gold medalist with England in the 3x3 tournament at the Commonwealth Games, is made of stronger stuff than that. And speaking of Orlan Jackman, he uh, recently helped start a, a project that will help clubs and organisations de deliver 3x3 in the West Midlands and beyond after the uh, legendary and now infamous gold medal win in Birmingham in the summer. Great to see Orlan Jackman giving something back, isn't it, with the 3x3. Yeah, no, great tournament that was. Jackman there off with his three-point attempt. Suave. Finds Rye inside, kicks it out Oyafusi. That's his favourite spot, but he's short. Rye with a big rebound, gets it to go and a foul. He's travelling. He travelled with it. Shame because he left so high to grab the rebound. You see, Drew Spinks was not happy with the right ball. position there. See. Puts the ball down. And he's obviously shuffled his feet. Yeah, shuffled his feet a little bit. Referee's thinking that was a bit too much. Of course, where we are in the commentary booth, we uh, can't really see under the basket there with uh, obviously the coaches standing and the players as well as Afis Abdul puts in a three. He just saw a little bit of space and thought, you know what, I'm putting that up. And nothing but the bottom of the net. Three for four from downtown for Afis Abdul. He now moves on to ten. Aqua Davis driving. Good Deflected hands. by Jackman, who comes up with it, but the ball just goes out of bounds. If Orland Jackman had been 10 years younger, he would have got that and then he'd taken it to the hoop. But it's just such a great veteran play from Orland. And, of course, Zaire Taylor, who still wants to play, you know, went and grabbed the ball from the other side of the court. Zaire Taylor playing for the Division Three team this season, so obviously retired from professional basketball, but... Uh, Still finding that urge to play for the Div 3 team this season. I mean, Zaire, what a quality player he was in the BBL. And then to come and finish his career here in Worthing for, what, three, four seasons? Yeah. Fantastic. When play over his calibre. Absolutely. Here is Newman. Turnover stolen away by Blaine. Worthing now in transition and a foul called on Taylor Johnson. Just that is on Taylor Johnson. That's going to be his third foul. So Taylor Johnson in foul trouble. Yeah. That is a big blow when he's seven points down and he's probably not going to get back on the floor until the third quarter. As you see there, there's the foul. Veron as he was just driving to the hoop and uh, now Veron to the line for two. Undoubtedly had his best game in a Thunder jersey in Division 1 this season against uh, against the Nottingham Hoods where he had 25 points of shooting 10 for 13 from the field. But Veron playing double duty this season, playing for the Div 1 team and the Div 3 team. As a timeout has been called, Worthing lead 37 to 28. Just a little over four minutes played in this second quarter. And it's been an exciting game so far. Worthing, of course, dominating. They're on top. But Hemel just need to slow down a bit, get their offense going. And the news that Taylor Johnson is on three fouls has really hampered them. Yeah, they can need someone else to step up. But they have been sharing the scoring 
load round. That's the good thing about these two teams. They have so many options. They're not relying on one or two players to do everything. There are different guys on each team who can step up and take control of the game. So someone has to step up because we, we said Tate Johnson's not to come back until the third quarter. It'd be, it'd be a risky move, I think, if Drew brought him back at this point. But this, this feels, I know it's December, but it feels like a playoff game. Guys, they, they know what's on the line here. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, you, you speak a, a about, you know, points coming from other areas. Of course, Hemel have that in bunches. You know, 32 bench points in their last game in the league against the Nottingham Hoods tells you everything, you know, you need to know. And so far, as you said, they have spread the um, scoring out. Hemel, um, Taylor Johnson leads Hemel with eight points. But, you know, you have Aaron Roy on five, Hakeem Siller on four. Six rebounds as well, if you're counting. Sam Newman is another player that can get it going in a hurry. He only has three right now. Rye, here is Newman for three, and he puts it in. Right on cue. Just what they needed. Arasol answers right back. He is having himself a ball game. Of course, these two teams will meet in the Kick King Trophy uh, final. Arasol was the first recipient of the MVP award when it was the L. Lynch Trophy. Of course, he won that with the Kestrels against the uh, Thames Valley Cavaliers. A number of players were playing in that game that feature here today as, on, as uh, Fies Abdul hits a three. He had a little look back towards the bench and say, yeah, no, this is easy. Aqua Davis is wide open, a flat three, but Ooh. it goes. It's a line drive shot, that is. Barely any arc on it, but it counts. Blaine backing down Aqua Davis. The turnaround jumper, that's pretty. Turnaround jumper, that's pretty. Yes. A smile on his face as well. Yeah, long way to go, but the Worthing players seem to be really re enjoying this game at the moment. Aaron Rye picks up his dribble, finds Newman. Aqua Davis, why not? Again! Back to back threes for Charles Aqua Davis. Blaine going to work again. Moyer looking for Afiz Abdul. The idea was there, but uh, Seth Suave pass. deflected it out. Yeah, because Suave is in front of the. The guy, so why, why throw it like that at that level? Throw it high if need be. Abdul, 10 on the shot clock. Abdul going to work inside. And Rye with the rebound. Six rebounds now for Aaron Rye to go with five points. Can need some points for him. And, and another is whistle has gone. Akeem Siller is really upset with the officials. Offensive foul again has been called. Was it a screen? We just want to see a replay. An, an illegal screen, maybe, was called. Hemel fans, um, Hemel's players really upset, and Hemel fans as well. Uh, just watching the replay. And you can see there the Silla. contact was there with Silla and Afis Abdul. Yeah, as Silla picked up the second foul. But as two. referee Tahir Akar just having a chat with Drew Spinks. Yeah, Drew's not happy whatsoever. But it's an, another offensive foul against Hemel. Blaine steps up for a three, and that's way short. He can hit those three-point shots, can Ronald Blaine. He's relaxed it a little bit. He uh, put the majority of those three-point attempts up for when he was playing with Team Newcastle. Right, with seven rebound, but could redo really some more scoring from him. Silla. Silla, nearly stolen away, has it back, gets his own rebound and picks up the pieces for two. That's the uh, Akeem Silla that we know. So he missed the shot, but as soon as he got close to basket, that's his wheelhouse, able to score. Arasol misses the layup, and away comes Akeem Silla for the Storm. Storm driving, and oh. Silla again scoring. A beautiful left-hand layup, able to pick the ball. One possession game now with three minutes to go in the second. Jackman. Moyer. 
finds Hafiz Abdul, a three, and that's short. And now it's the Hemel fans' chance to get on their feet. Now they got a chance to tie or take the lead. We talked earlier about keeping Silla away from the basket, and then two possessions in a row, he's been able to get to the hoop and score. Well, Worthing's biggest lead so far has been 11 points. Hemel have not really led except for the opening stages of this game. Here is Suave, loses the ball, picks it back up. Rye finds Silla over Blaine. Rye gets the offensive board and the game is tied at 43. Arasol. Abdul driving, stolen away by Rye. Silla has it. Aqua Davis and Moyer with the foul. Momentum now with the visitors. Yeah, they, they trailed 31-20. So they've outscored 23 to 12 uh, since that timeout. But and Coach Zaya Taylor has seen enough. He's called a timeout with the game tied at 43 with 228 remaining. And everything you were saying it earlier, you know, it's like a playoff game right now. And the intensity is just growing just that little bit as the game progresses. I don't want to use, try to use a boxing match analogy, but that's what the, each team's trying to land a punch here. Worthing, they, they got ahead twice, a couple of big leads. Mm. Hemel have responded each time. We talked about Silla not being able to get to the hoop. What happens recently? Silla can suddenly get back to the hoop again. Absolutely, yeah. The they, they shut him out. They kept away from the basket. And, of course, Rye was in there as well. It, when these two guys are around the basket, good things happen for Hemel. And Akeem Silla has caused Worthing all sorts of problems over the years through his times with the uh, Thames Valley Cavaliers, now getting into his rhythm just a little bit as eight points and eight rebounds, so close to his, uh, his customary double-double. But for Worthing, you, know, you, you sense that Andre Arasol, who started the game on fire, you know, is just slowing down a little bit. You know, six for nine from the field for 14 points, but you know, hasn't got going in the last few minutes. Yeah, because what Abdul, he's been stepping up as yeah. well. So the two of them have been really key for Worthing. But as you mentioned earlier, these two teams are deep. Other guys need to step up. Just one stat to remind you of. David Moyer, who uh, averages around 17 points a game, has still yet to get off the mark in this game. It's a ninth rebound for Rye, but then a turnover. Arasol, one on one. Arasol all the way and a foul. Fantastic play for the and one opportunity. Rye did really, really well to get the offensive board, but then they had the turnover and Worthing are off to the races. And, and that will really help Andre Arasol. And Andre Arasol, who actually struggled in their uh, last league win against the Westminster Warriors was 3 for 11 from the field, really coming back to life today. That was a close game against a bottom of the table team, Absolutely. John. I did not expect that score. Worthing coming back from 17 points down. And David Moyer with a big, big three with 23 seconds to go as Rye goes inside and won. He says, if you can do an and one, I can do one too. And he's starting to get going. He's <laughs> oh, nine rebounds already tonight. Well, Aaron Rye, who leads the league in efficiency with Ronald Blaine, a close second. Third in blocks with 1.4 blocks a game. Isn't too bad from the foul line either, around 80% from the foul line this season. And a whistle has gone. I think we might have a... Uh, is it a clock issue? A, yeah, just a slight clock issue here. As uh, I think when um, Worthing uh, got the ball inbound, they started the uh, shot clock at 20 seconds accidentally, so it might go back a bit. Tied up at 46, less than two minutes. So the three seconds off the game clock. Remaining, yeah, here is Arasol. Arasol driving to the hoop. Blaine kicks it out. Abdul at the top. Puts in a three. Oh, he's feeling it. 
Afiz Abdul now with 15 points. Yeah, 35 of their 49 points coming from him and Arisol. Rai dancing, going inside the up and under. Great oh. footwork from Aaron Rai. Oh, some great plays from both teams. Arisol. Here is Abdul. Blaine putting the moves on Rye. A three is short. And Blaine couldn't hang on to it, so it'll be a Hemel ball. Uh, Rye is one rebound away, John, from a double double. Ten points and nine rebounds. And we've still got a minute to go in the first half. Here is Newman. Silla driving at Abdul. Good defense there from Akeem Silla, but uh, foul's been called. <coughs> he, he did just look for a second as if say, you're not calling anything against me, are you? Because so many fouls have been called against Hemel this evening. Zaire Taya can't believe the call. That's a second foul now on Hafiz Abdul, who's pleading his case. He thought that was an offensive foul. And of course, we're in a situation where Taylor Johnson mm. has been sat on the bench. And Hemel of his burst into life. We talked about who would step up. Adam Rye has done really well to, to shoulder some of that load. And of course, the man at the line, Akeem Silla. Akeem Silla makes the first and splits the second. And there's been some additional cheering in the uh, crowd here as uh, we've just been told that England have equalised against France in the World Cup. <laughs> Should we give it out a spoiler alert? <laughs> yeah, there's people watching this game and then watching football later. Come on. <laughs> yeah, apologies if uh, that is what you're doing. But uh, there was some additional cheers uh, after that foul was called as Afiz Abdul misses the first. Game is tied at 49 with 47.7 seconds remaining in the second. I'll tell you this right now, Drew Spinks and Zaire Taylor have not got football on the brain as Ronald Blaine goes inside off the miss from Abdul. Hemel should have done better defending that miss. They got paid the penalty. No pun intended. No. Here is so, <laughs> I'll try to see if he can get away with that. Suave dancing his way inside, blocked there by Blaine, and Arasol comes up with it. Great work from Blaine. It is two on one deny. though, so Arasol, yeah, Arasol will have to slow it down. Shot clock has been turned off, so Worthing will get the final possession, leading by two. Arasol. Ward loses the ball, it will stay with the Thunder. 2.6 seconds, plenty of time to run a play. As Veronese will not actually check in, Zaya Taylor at the last second decides that he should stay on the bench. And there's just some uh, confusion here because uh, Drew Spinks wanted to put Romario Spence on, which he now does for the final 2.6 seconds, and Aaron Rye will take a seat. Five-tenths of a second have been taken off the uh, game clock, so... It should really be they reset should, yeah, to 2.6. It, it should be reset to 2.6. I'm not sure if the referees have even seen it There yet. you go, they've mentioned They're, it now. Now they have. Final seconds, Ward all over from Suave, and it comes off the back iron, and that ends a frantic first quarter leading to a very physical second quarter, and we have at half-time... Worthing Thunder 51, Hemel Storm 49. It's everything we expected and more, it has to be said right now. Yeah, we had that little cagey start, but since then it explodes in life. We, as we said a couple of times already, it has that playoff feel to it. There's a lot of pressure on Worthing because Worthing are the home team tonight. They can't afford to really lose this game. They, they really want to win it. Does Hemel win it? It puts them in such a great position going into the second half of the season. But Absolutely. 
Just, and just a wonderful 20 minutes of action, John. Absolutely. Leading all scorers, Andre Arasol with 17 points for the Worthing Thunder. Hafiz Abdul has 15. And for the Storm, Aaron Rye currently one rebound shy of a double-double. He has 12 points, nine boards to lead Hemel and Hakeem Silla also with nine points and eight rebounds close to his customary double-double. All to play for going into the second half though, Niall. Yeah, and of course, Hemel have done this comeback with Taylor Johnson sitting on the bench, which is fantastic. Absolutely. We yeah. wanted players to step up. Silla and Rye have been the guys to do it. So before we go to the halftime, just a quick shout out to our game day sponsors for NBL Live, Wilson, SportServe Dynamic, Sports England, and Sure Shot. A big thank you to our sponsors providing you with the coverage of NBL Live. So it's half time here at the Worthing Leisure Centre, 51-49, Worthing Thunder, edge in front. It's still all to play for though. Join myself and Niall Gray for the second half in around 13 minutes time. So Slam Jam, it's a new initiative by Basketball England, targeted at 7 to 11 year olds. It's about getting the children to, to have fun, to link basketball with a fun experience so that we can get lifelong involvement in the sport. And it's really focused on engagement and a fun, positive first experience. So it's not so much about the skill development side of basketball. It's really just about giving people a positive first experience of basketball. They're having fun, they're with their friends. They can develop at their own pace in their own time. So it's really developing on coordination, core strength, as well as basketball skills. So there's not necessarily basketball specific games, but they've got basketballs thrown in there. So they'll be they're working on dribbling, shooting, passing in a less structured environment than like a training session. And it's yeah, just focused on fun and getting primary school age children engaged. When they come to the first slam jam session, they get a t-shirt which they can keep. Each primary school they get some Slam Jam basketballs and a little goodie bag that the children can take home. And another thing, throughout the session, if we see like someone's doing really good at a certain skill or teamwork or being just nice and friendly to other people, they can get stickers. Good practice in sportsmanship as well as being good at the skills. So I think the reason this programme is different is that there's a 12-week curriculum and there's different things to work on. And obviously, as a coach, you can kind of chop and change a little bit as is appropriate for the age group that you're teaching. But it just means that everybody's getting that same fun 
first positive experience. Literally, we're just trying to get them to have positive experiences with basketball so that later on they can be maybe even just a supporter of the game. Go online, get in touch with Basketball England. They can also search Sam Jam for the local centres to them that run the initiative and they can inquire, maybe even get a coach to come in and run a 12-week session. Without commitment, the sport is nothing. Without commitment, sport can be just a recreational tool. Like if we want to have sport as an educational tool, it has to be committed. So Slam Jam, it's a new initiative by Basketball England, targeted at 7 to 11 year olds. It's about getting the children to, to have fun, to link basketball with a fun experience so that we can get lifelong involvement in the sport. And it's really focused on engagement and a fun, positive first experience. So it's not so much about the skill development side of basketball. It's really just about giving people a positive first experience of basketball. They're having fun, they're with their friends. They can develop at their own pace in their own time. So it's really developing on coordination, core strength, as well as basketball skills. So there's not necessarily basketball specific games, but they've got basketballs thrown in there. So they'll be they're working on dribbling, shooting, passing in a less structured environment than like a training session. And it's yeah, just focused on fun and getting primary school age children engaged. When they come to the first slam jam session, they get a t-shirt which they can keep. Each primary school they get some slam jam basketballs and then a little goodie bag that the children can take home. And another thing, throughout the session, if we see like someone's doing really good at a certain skill or teamwork or being just nice and friendly to other people, they can get stickers. Good practice and sportsmanship as well as being good at the skills. So I think the reason this program is different is that there's a 12 week curriculum and there's different things to work on. And obviously, as a coach, you can kind of chop and change a little bit as is appropriate for the age group that you're teaching. But it just means that everybody's getting that same fun, first positive experience. Literally, we're just trying to get them to have positive experiences with basketball so that later on they can be maybe even just a supporter of the game. Go online, get in touch with Basketball England. They can also search Sam Jam for the local centres to them that run the initiative and they can inquire, maybe even get a coach to come in and run a 12-week session.
Welcome back to the Worthing Leisure Centre where the Worthing Thunder take a narrow 51-49 advantage over the Hemel Storm in this top of the table clash between the two undefeated teams in NBL Division One, John Hobbs and Niall Gray here alongside you. And uh, we must uh, add before we start the third quarter that um, we have been warned by Worthing Leisure Centre staff that there might be issues with the uh, internet connection um, for this live stream at this present time due to, and people will, might laugh at this, the uh, amount of people also watching the England-France game in the World Cup that is currently ongoing. On. There is football on, yeah. Have that been, is currently have ongoing. So um, you're with us now, but just... Uh, Bear with us if there is any internet issues, and we do apologise in advance. Yeah. So here we go, start of this third period. Seth Suave on the ball, easily gets his way in, but misses the layup. Someone did say in the comments they should let Suave shoot some more, and he missed. Veron as he misses the uh, corner three. And Suave has it back. Aaron Rye wide open for three. That's off the back iron. Rebound by a returning Taylor Johnson, who goes in between three Thunder players, misses the hook shot. Three fouls on Taylor, but playing with no fear. Arasol muscles his way in, taking full advantage of the fact that Taylor Johnson is on three fouls. And an offensive foul has been called. That's Taylor Johnson's fourth. Veron, as he knew instantly what he was doing, getting right in the way of Johnson. Johnson bundled into him, and the referees call an offensive foul. Drew Spinks not happy. The first minute of this third period, now, and Taylor Johnson on four fouls. As you say, playing with no fear, and then it's a really sloppy foul. Arasol, a bit too quick for his own good. Fights for the ball with Akeem Silla. Shot clock will be expired now and uh, a turnover for the Thunder. But Chapman huge. trying to shoot from the floor, John. Absolutely, but you know, already in this first minute of this third period and Taylor Johnson on four fouls. Yeah, and the risk is they've kept him in the game, of course, on the ball now. Akeem Silla inside, he has 11. So I think we're going to play Johnson as a facilitator, maybe get him play more a bit more point. Blaine, nice pass inside to Jackman. Pretty basketball from the Worthing Thunder. Johnson. Drew Spinks trusting Johnson on four fouls. Rye finds Johnson a three that's short. Ball ping ponging it around, and Ezzy comes up with it two on one. Ezzy all the way. Ooh, lovely play from him, taking all the way to the bucket. Worthing leading 57 to 51 early stages. Rye, beautiful footwork inside. A little Euro step there, but he did so well to get past his guy and score. Blaine finds Jackman driving at Silla. Yeah, they can need to find a way to stop that twice now in the last couple of moments that Jackman's been able to drive to the hoop and score. Here is Newman. Open man is Seth Suave in the corner. That's in and out. And Blaine with the rebound. Seth Suave now one of three from downtown. Arasol, of course, who had the hot hand in the first quarter. Here is Aaron Rye. Seth Suave, a three, gets it to go. A few misses, that will do his confidence. A world of good, lovely shot from him. Six points, five assists. 
for the Hemel number eight, who was scouted by the Storm after he uh, played for the USA Select and scored 32 points on Hemel last season. You can see Taylor Johnson playing a sort of no-hands defense. Can't do anything to risk picking up that fifth. Thunder no doubt will be zeroing in on Taylor Johnson. Well, he's so far survived three minutes. Drew Spinks still not taking him off. So a lot of faith in Taylor Johnson as Veronese will take a seat. And Tom Ward will come back into the game. And I was uh, told by Worthing Thunder assistant coach Chris Wright at halftime that Tom Ward underwent emergency root canal surgery this morning and uh, is not at a hundred percent but is uh, playing tonight and you know that's a testament to the the toughness of Tom Ward and it shows you how big this game is absolutely and uh, a player I remember in the uh, 2019 national trophy final got off a plane from the United States came all the way to the University of East London and scored with his first touch of the ball, and that was a three-pointer. As the ball goes out of bounds, just a bit of confusion as to whose ball it is. As Hafiz Abdul will come into the game and Ronald Blaine will take a seat. Here is Ward on the catch and shoot. And a bit of confusion as to who was getting the off the uh, defensive rebound. Taylor Johnson has it, a bit out of control, and a foul has been called on Ward. Yeah, he's, doing, he's, also, he's got to play like sort of dodgems now. He's got to keep away from any player possible. Able to draw that foul though. Just over four minutes played in this third quarter. Here is Newman. Rye putting the moves on Jackman. Good defense oh. there from Orlan. Jackman deflects the pass. Rye still has it. Ball batting around all over the place. Silla, short. Jackman rebounds. Nine rebounds for Orlan. Jackman to go with nine points. Abdul turning. Oh, uh, good, defense from Rye. good defense, yeah, good defense from Rye. Yes. Has his rebound, uh, double double off that previous play. Johnson misses the uh, three, that's 16 points, 10 rebounds now for Aaron Rye, and a foul has been called. Andre Arasol wanted shooting fouls there for David Moyer, but uh, referees disagreeing. Cost four assists as well for Rye. Could we see a triple double? We've still got plenty of time in this There's game. Still a lot of time. And he has been handling the ball quite a lot. Absolutely. Well, Aaron Rye has uh, hit a triple triple double this season, so I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a second. Here is Moyer. Yet to get going on the scoring side of things. Here is Moyer driving. Goes glass, misses everything. And Suave comes up with it. Suave to Johnson. It's two on one. Beautiful play from Taylor Johnson. That was pretty. Just found a little bit of space and able to score. Hemel up by one. Ward, double dribble. Yeah. Great defense from Suave, John. Did really, really well to force that turnover. Zaya Taylor remonstrating with the referee, but uh, it's Hemel Ball leading by one. You can sense a near tug of war going between these two teams for the lead. Two teams with competitive fire entrenched in their DNA, the lob and the finish by Silla. It's a three-point lead now for Hemel. Once again, he found a little bit of space by the basket, able to score. It's so well to lose his man. 
Ward finds Arasol. Arasol finds a bit of room. Tom Ward, a pull up two. It's off the back iron. See them hit many of those over his career, but not on that occasion. Newman, a three, puts it in. Sam Newman from downtown. Timeout, Zaire Taylor. Hemel. Rampant. Thunder reeling. And Taylor wants to call a timeout. But what a spell this is from the storm. Taylor Johnson, four fouls, who cares? Right now, as a team, Hemel are getting it done. Well, so far, it's looking good for Drew Spinks to leave Tay Johnson again because he picked that fourth foul up so quickly in the start of the third quarter. He could have sat him down. He could have left him into the on the bench for the fourth quarter, kept him in the game. Hemel have responded, and they have responded perfectly. Absolutely. Three players in double figures so far. Aaron Rye with 16 and 11. Taylor Johnson with 10 points. And Akeem Silla. Still one rebound shy of a double-double. He has 13 and 9. But so far, all the momentum with the Storm and a good timeout that for Zaire Taylor. Yeah, he needs that. Now, he can't afford to let the game get away from him because we're in the second half. Only got three minutes to go in this third quarter. Hemel on a tear. He has to stop that momentum. Hemel have come back from 11 points down and now lead... Worthing, who were in a similar position last week against Westminster, trailing by as many as 17, and trailing for the majority of the game, it must be said, before some David Moyer heroics in the latter stages of the fourth brought them home. Abdul. Here is Blaine. Blaine misses the handle. Pull-up jumper from the elbow is money. Yeah, able to cover the ball, just hit his leg. He lost it. momentum for a second, but was able to collect and score. Newman, it's nearly stolen by Blaine. Silla has it. Silla, the open man is Rye. Splash! <laughs> Fantastic shot. He is coming to play. Here is Moyer. Now Moyer's fouled straight away by Suave as Charles Aqua Davis prepares to check back in to the game for the Storm, who lead by seven with 2.56 remaining. This is actually uh, the Hemel Storm's biggest lead so far of the game as Taylor Johnson takes a seat. Clearly not happy with something. Arasol to Blaine, catch and shoot, and that's too long. Blaine though gets his own rebound. Hemel come up with it. Here is Newman. Newman loses the handle. Finds Siller anyway and scores. Moya, catch and shoot again. This time it's Arasol and this time Thunder make it count. Big basket for him. They're still trailing by six though. Right. Well, Thunder fans not accustomed to this in their own backyard right now. They're trailing. Suave dancing around. Kicks it out. Newman wide open on the shot clock buzzer. Misses everything. And yeah. tough shot the ball for back. Sorry, John. Tough shot for him. And he was really deep on that. Had no opportunity. Had to shoot the ball straight away. Didn't have time to improve his position. Unfortunately, unable to get it anywhere near the uh, ring. But. Six point lead for the Storm as Afis Abdul takes a seat. And Brendan Okoronkwo comes back into the game. Here is Okoronkwo. And his pass, intended for Blaine, goes out of bounds.
course, you said about Worthing home to play from, from behind. Hemel did it in the first half. Got, they've got an opportunity in the next couple of minutes to see if they can build themselves a double-digit lead. A lot of time, though, as Newman finds Charles Ackwood Davis driving into a sea of Thunder players and a travels call. Yeah, great defence from Worthing. Completely shut him off, gave him nowhere to go. Oika goes backwards and that results in a turnover. Roughly 90 seconds left of this third period. Moya gets it back from Arasol. Moya, turnover there again from the Thunder and away come the Storm. Rye inside. Oh, great move from him. Went one way, went the other, able to score. 21 a... points now for Aaron Rye. All the noise coming from the storm. Blaine inside. He talked about Rye, but the rebounds, the 12 rebounds and four assists is showing why you keep mentioning Milkov being the best efficiency guy in the league. Ronald Blaine now with 12 points after that score. Silla. Silla loses the ball, has it again. Six to shoot, and Silla makes the pay. Yeah, it did really well initially, keep away from the basket, but couldn't keep him away for long. Arasol on 22. Blaine, wide open, three, gets it to go. Rye, final seconds of the third. Rye goes oh. inside. And that's the end of the third quarter. Just amazing. The space just seemed to open up for him, able to score. Zaire Taylor wanted to travel on that play as well. Yeah, I think they were trying to pull, not pull the chair away, but they're trying to almost get him to travel. But nothing was called. Rye got to the basket, and that's two more points for him. And all of a sudden, from Thunder leading by two points going into this third period, they now trail 69-76 going into the final quarter. It's all to play for, but Hemel, what a third quarter they have had. Yeah, absolutely fantastic, John. They've played really, really well. They took that risk with Taylor Johnson. Of course, that's something that, again, we don't know how that's going to pan out at the end of the game because... He's, he's, he's managed to go through that quarter with the four yeah. fouls. They took that risk, Drew Spinks, saying, we'll keep him in the game. Other guys have stepped up as well. He's stepped back a bit. He's playing what I like to call the no-hands defense because he does not want to pick up a foul. There's a lot of switching when the ball handler comes towards him, which is, is good because obviously they're working to keep him in the game as long as possible because he could be pivotal down the stretch. But Aaron Wright, I mean, what a, what a game he's having. Absolutely. And, you know, aside from... Aaron Rye, you've got Akeem Silla on 17 points. But one other statistic that you know can strike me for the Hemel Storm is Taylor Johnson has been in foul trouble, but they've scored 11 bench points as well, which is pivotal coming into this game. And you know, coaches need to have that loyalty to their bench. And right now, Drew Spinks, who has given loyalty to Taylor Johnson on four fouls, has also proved his worth with his bench. Yeah, well, if we go back to the first half, we talk about trying to keep Taylor Johnson in the game. He sat down for quite a while in that first half, didn't he, with the fouls. And then what happens? Hemel went on that tear, didn't he? Absolutely, Came right yeah. back into the game. So he's just important. <laughs> he's on the bench or off it. He's a key part of this team. But Silla and Rye, what a performance they're having. Of course, Silla just one rebound away from himself getting a double-double. And for Worthing Thunder, one of the best teams breaking out in transition this season. They've only scored 14 points in transition tonight. Same for Hemel. The majority of that was done in the first quarter. So start of the final period in this mammoth NBL Division I clash between the two undefeated teams. Someone is going to have a blemish by the end of the night. And one for Aaron Rye. Again, using that incredible footwork and court awareness to space himself and the players. And Aaron Rye will go to the foul line. You see, he averages 20 and a half points a game. 
And what's he on now? 25, about to make it 26 yeah. if he can make his free throw. And we've still got 9.49 to go in the game. And it's a double-digit lead now for the Hemel Storm. Yeah, Worthing had that 11-point lead in the first half. Hemel up by 10. Got to see how the home side respond. No team has scored more points in the league than Worthing Thunder have as Okoronkwo misses the open three. Here comes the Storm again with Rye. Yeah, good job to sh shut off the basket to him. Hem will have to uh, reset. Still a lot of time on the shot clock as Suave has it. Inside it goes to Aqua. Davis blows the layup. A let off there for the Thunder. Here is Moyer. Finds Arasol driving inside to Jackman. A lovely little pass off. Jackman, right place, right time for the finish. Rye driving at Jackman. Has to kick it out. Aqua Davis had to jump out of the gym to get it. Here is Rye. Loses the ball, still has it inside to Silla, and a foul has been called. Yeah, bit of a broken play on there. Able to get the ball back and then get it into Silla. But it just feels the last minute or two that Rye is trying to force the issue, mm. trying to do too much. Got a bit more trust in his teammates and just pass that ball around. As Aqua Davis will take a seat, Taylor Johnson will come back into the game. And you, can, you know that Rye's done a lot because he's he was standing out of shot, hands on his hips, just getting a little breather because you know he's going to pretty much play the rest of this game. He's done so much here tonight. Aaron Rye, what a performance so far. 26 points, 12 rebounds, 10 for 15 from the field. You can add a couple of three-pointers in that tally as well. Yeah, 32 efficiency as well, so you just know how well he's been doing it. But like I said, just the last minute or so, he just seems he's forcing the issue a little bit. Just needs to calm down a bit more. A bit more teamwork from Hemel. Because they are in the at the moment, despite that missed free throw for Silla. Here is Arasol. Finds Okoronkwo. Blaine just on the foul line. Steps back, passes it to Moya. Shot clock winding down and Moya misses everything. It's great defense from Rye. Gave Moya nowhere to go. Rye. Sorry, Blaine, so I should say. Nearly deflected, and it will stay a Hemel ball. Zaya Taylor really unhappy. And the two referees are just going to confer, and the referee reverses his decision. It's a Worthing possession. Did look like a Worthing ball from where I was. I had our director in the way I was looking. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Arasol. Inside to Abdul, misses the layup. Should have really made that one. Of course, Hafiz Abdul playing against his former team tonight. Eager to impress, here is Newman. Finds Johnson. Johnson, a pull up jumper, he's fouled. It's on Ronald Blaine. And two shots for Taylor Johnson, three fouls for Ronald Blaine chance for Johnson to get a bit of offense it's a chance for both teams just to get a little breather because the jo game's at frantic pace sorry John absolutely Taylor Johnson an 82% foul shooter for the season so far misses his first I think the fact he's had to sit quite a bit more tonight he's I think just, just a little bit out of his rhythm well, he averages around four trips to the foul line, and he's one for four tonight from the foul line after that miss. Arasol, good defense there from Newman, tracking down Arasol quickly. Ball goes out of bounds, it's a Hemel ball. Yeah, it just went over the baseline. Another chance for Hemel to try and restore a double-digit lead. 
tactically in this second half, Hemel have got everything right. Drew Spinks has got everything right. Suave, wide open three, that's short. Here is Moyer. Moyer driving. And out of control layup. The circus shot did not go. And in the other end, the King Seller puts in the layup. Timeout again by Zaire Taylor. And you see two totally different plays from the two undefeated teams. Worthing very out of control, leading to a very out of control shot from David Moy. But at the other end, composed offense from Hemel leading to transition buckets. It's almost like they said, this is not how you run a fast break. We'll show you how to run a fast break. And now the situation we got was Worthing had that 11 point lead in the first half. Now Hemel have it in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. And now they lead by 11 with 6.57 remaining. And Worthing really have it all to do. And Zaya Taylor really, as you can see, being animated towards his team. He has not been happy with how Thunder have played, especially in this second half. Yeah, and time's starting to tick down now. Still plenty to go, just under seven minutes, but they need to make that run. They can't afford to be down double digits for too long. Of course, they're playing at home as well, John, so hopefully the home fans can get them buoyed up for these final 6.57. That they could do with Abdul scoring again, probably get a few more points from Jackman. See if Arasol can get hot. They've got plenty of scoring options. They just need to find a way to put that ball in the bucket. Well, Thunder because, fans are still in good voice. I mean, at one point they were on pace for a 100 point game. And now they're way off that. So the scoring has been more difficult for them as the game has wore on. Here is Moya. Thunder really need to get out of their slump right now. Arasol puts in a three. That'll do it. Yeah, and Rye did a really good job at trying to shut him down, but Arasol was just that little bit better. Newman out muscling Moya. A block there from Blaine on the three-point attempt from Suave. So Hemel will keep the ball. Here is Newman. Taylor Johnson at one of his favorite spots, stolen by Moya. The league leader in steals comes good again, and I think a foul has been called. Just need to check on who it is. He's done. It's on Taylor Johnson. And yeah. Taylor Johnson's night is done. That's huge. Yeah, the gamble worked in the third quarter. It's not worked in the fourth. 10 points, six assists, and four rebounds for Taylor Johnson. The only thing in, we could say is he has been a little bit out of sorts because he has had to sit for quite a while. And Hemel did do well when he was out in the first half, but they, now it's a chance for Worthing to turn the tide of the game again. Be more minutes for Charles Aqua Davis as he comes on. Here is Arasol, six to shoot, drives too long. Abdul on the follow. See there, picking their men up really early, Worthing. They've cut it down to six. It was a double-digit game. And they want to try and take advantage of Taylor's absence. Suave nearly got it stripped by Moyer. A bit too much for the referee's liking. And David Moyer... Yeah, unlike the previous time, there was a bit of contact this time around. Worthing are now going to be in the penalty, so equally as damaging Taylor Johnson being fouled out. Worthing now in the penalty, so from now on, any foul that goes against the Thunder will result in foul shots, but uh, Hemel have really struggled from the foul line tonight. 7 of 13 from the Phoebe strike. And another miss. Just That's hope these missed free throws don't come back to haunt them. Moyer, a three, gets it to go. Timeout, Drew Spinks. 
It's all of a sudden a one possession game with 5.24 remaining. And uh, a welcome to those who are joining us after the conclusion of the football. You are in for a treat. What a game we've had so far. Absolutely fantastic. And Hemel, that 11 point lead. And Worthing have done to Hemel what Hemel did to Worthing in the first half. They've battled their way back. It's a three point game, five minutes to go. Dare I say it, John? You know, this it game could. could go extra distance tonight. It just has that feeling. It just is it's a game that I feel is going to go to overtime tonight or it's going to go down to the final shot. Both teams want this so much because even, like we mentioned, it's December, but this game means so much in the Division One race. What an early Christmas present it is for these basketball fans here at the Worthing Leisure Centre. As we said at the top of the show, it's hosted some iconic matches in the past, one of the most infamous basketball venues in the country here on the South Coast. And such legends have been playing basketball in this venue. You know, players such as Colin Irish, Steve Nelson, Herman Harid, um, Zaya Taylor, Alfredo Watt, local players as well, Chris Wright, James Brain, Rob Newson. You know, they've all played at this venue and it's just you know, another iconic venue and it's writing another chapter here today with these two teams pretty, pretty much putting out an epic encounter. Yeah, what a great game for the NBL Live cameras to be present at. Aaron Rye. Finds Newman in the corner, a three that's short. Rye, another rebound offensive. Oh, great hustle. Great hustle from Aqua Davis, but Aqua Davis, Travel. I think, travelled with it. Yeah. But it's just great to see. It has that playoff game feel. I hate to keep saying it, but it really does. They're fighting for every single loose ball. Every possession counts. 4.58 remaining, halfway through the fourth quarter. Fans on their feet. A few more have actually piled into the leisure centre. I wonder where they've been. Here is Moyer. Abdul. Abdul driving, goes glass, and he's going to go to the foul line. Chance for Hafiz Abdul to cut the deficit to one. And you just know, I don't know if hopefully people at home can hear how the volume in the Worthing Lynch Center has really lifted. And You've a technical to... foul has been called as well on Aaron Rye. So that's two fouls so for he's him. On he's four. on four yeah. fouls, yeah. So Andre Arasol will take the technical free throw. So Thunder now have a chance to tie the game. Just pleading these cases who won the referees, but once the decision's made, that is it. And Aaron Rye now on four fouls, so that is huge. Yeah, they're the Thunder and Zaya Taylor, just overhearing Zaya Taylor, just as Afiz Abdul was shooting the foul, the first foul shot, to really zero in on him as well. So Thunder will be aware of what's happening right now. Yeah, he's been such a big presence, Rye, for this Hemel team tonight. If they lose him and Taylor Johnson, you wonder how big a blow that could be. He grabs yet another rebound. And a foul has been called. And, of course, Worthing already in the, in penalty. the penalty. Yeah, absolutely. So Rye will go to the line. This could be a very long finish. As uh... That's OK. I'm staying down the coast <laughs> and I'm not going home. Ronald Blaine is now on four fouls as well. But if, while he's taking the free throws, you are, you're right, John. The amount of people who have suddenly appeared in the Worthing Ledger Centre as soon as the football wrapped up, because there's obviously a cafe at the end of the corridor behind the stand, and the, the game was on in there, and there were people watching it. And suddenly they've come in to what to witness what could be a fantastic finale. And this is just the first game between these two teams this season, though, in meeting in at least one of the finals. 
Who knows, they could be in the National Cup final in January. Of course, there are other teams as well playing as all and Chapman goes inside. We're tied. The noise is just intensifying a little bit here as Rye goes at the elbow and misses. Chapman with the long rebound. Yeah, he didn't want to drive the basket, couldn't risk that foul. Arasol out of control. Hafiz Abdul on the follow. Tipped out of bounds by Moyer, it will be a Hemel ball. And the momentum just switches back again. It's Worthing now in the ascendancy. Hemel looking a little bit shaky. Got to try and beat this pressure and then obviously Arizal knocking the ball away. And this is the defense we've seen from Thunder all season long. Full court pressure defense. Obviously as someone coming from a BBL background, John, if you want more people to watch NBL, this is a great advert. Absolutely, and it's only fitting that it's the two top teams in NBL Division 1, both unbeaten, Worthing 9-0, Hemel 8-0. There's a foul has been called, so Aaron Rye will go back to the foul line. Aaron Rye, 5 for 6 currently tonight from the charity stripe, but Hemel 8 for 16. As he makes the first. It's a one-point game with 3.45 remaining. Misses the second, Blaine with the rebound. Jackman. Hafiz Abdul driving, gets it to go, and a foul. Huge play from Hafiz Abdul. See on the... Uh comment on the uh, screen there what Zaire Taylor thought of that play but As you see the see the replay here if he's Abdul driving at Charles Aqua Davis getting the bump yeah and was, getting was the score. Set. good call and, the, and that worthy make it a two possession game now Hemel need to respond Fans have not sat down in this fourth quarter. Newman and a foul. Hey, if you can do an and one play, so can I, he says. Needed somebody else. I mean, look, I was looking at Aaron Rye over in the corner. He looked a little bit tired. He's played a lot of minutes tonight. I think he's only sat for like two minutes the entire game. So far, he's played 34 minutes, Aaron Rye. Yeah, so just over two minutes then he's sat. In fact, you could say that Hemel have only ran with a six-person bench. I mean, Teo Oyafusi's played six minutes. And Romario Spencer's only played two seconds. Yeah, that final play in yeah. the uh, first half. Arasol driving. Finds Jackman. Nearly travelled with it. Inside to Blaine. <laughs> Hemel's starting five have played... Well over 30 minutes. Stolen by Jackman off the pass from Suave. And Jackman with the finish. Timeout through Spix. Thunder lead by four with 2.53 remaining. And the fans absolutely love it. Jackman has got them off their feet. A lot of them. Just an amazing turnaround. Hemel just appeared to look a little bit nervous. They look a little bit tired. Could it be because, obviously, without the exception of Tay Johnson because of the foul trouble, their starting five have played so many minutes tonight, whereas Drew Spinks has kept faith in his starters. 23 points and 12 rebounds against Westminster last week. And now Orlan Jackman with a double-double of 13 points, 12 rebounds here tonight coming live in the fourth quarter. How many times have we seen Orlan Jackman step up when it matters? <laughs> many, many years for many different teams. Absolutely. It, he's a player that could still play at a high level. There's no doubt about that. And to have someone like him on this roster 
is absolutely fantastic because he, he gives them that veteran presence. He's been around. He knows what it takes to win. He knows what, how to play defense. He plays hard every single possession. He sets a great example for the other players. 2.53 remaining. If you've just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel, welcome everybody. My goodness me, are you in for a pre-Christmas cracker? What an ending in store between the two unbeaten clubs in NBL Division One. Who will leave here tonight with a blemish on their record? It's all to play for. Here is Newman. Aqua Davis. Back to Newman. Suave, wide open, three, oh. splash! <laughs> Wow, I thought that was going to hit the roof. Had such an arc in it, that one. Third in the NBL in the three-point percentage at 52%. Seth Suave coming alive in that last play. Abdul nearly had it stolen off him, still has it. Jackman, two to shoot. They've got to do something. Jackman off the back iron. Rye with another rebound. This is 15th. What a night he's having. And here he is on the ball. Silla inside, hangs and gets fouled. Yeah, he didn't want to risk driving in and maybe drawing some contact. An offensive foul, found Silla. Couldn't score, but he's going to the line. Of course, if, you, if you're behind, you want to cut the lead. Great time to is with the uh, clock stopped. Akeem Silla, 20 points and 11 rebounds tonight. Alongside Aaron Rye, what a shift he has put in. He's three for five from the foul line as well. well Silla, <laughs> just look at his numbers. Averaged those numbers last season with Tim Zali. Played over five years with the Cavaliers before heading to Hemel Hempstead for his first season with the Storm. Blaine pulls up for two. And that's rebound number 12 for Silla. Now the Storm fans making some noise. Yeah, they're in trouble, but they've got a chance now to take the lead back. Absolutely, and David Moyer. He's done. David Moyer is fouled out on that foul, and Seth Suave will go to the foul line. So Veron Ezi will come back into the game for the Thunder. David Moyer fouls out just three points, nine assists. On one for six shooting tonight. Yeah, fouls an issue now. We know obviously about Rye. We've mentioned Adam Rye's four fouls. And of course Blaine as well has got four fouls for Worthing. Of course, yeah, at the other end, you mentioned Aaron Rye on four fouls as well for the Storm. One point lead for the Storm, 120 remaining. Jackman, Abdul, inside to Blaine. Great help, help defense by Aqua Davis, stolen. And Rye is fouled by Abdul. They just put the shoulder on him. It was a sloppy foul to give because it sends Rye straight back to the line for another opportunity. That's three fouls now on Abdul. Rye misses the first. Still a one point game. Rye misses them both, Blaine with the rebound. Entering the final minute. What a poor game. Arasol for three. Rye with another rebound. 16 now for Aaron Rye. This is going down to the wire. If you're watching the game, go and share the link on social media. Get a few more people watching. Could be in for a great finale. There's nine on the shot clock. Rye driving. Rye puts it in. Makes 36 seconds remaining. Himmel by three. 
Marisol inside, blocked by Seller. It's still a Worthing ball. He says you're not having that. There's no way you're having that. <laughs> one possession game, 28 seconds left. And one minute, he's gone from zero to hero. Adam Wright, sorry, Aaron Wright, missing a couple of free throws badly and then able to make up for it with that basket, which gives his side a three-point advantage. Absolutely, but at the other end, Akeem Silla with a huge block, potentially a game-winning block right yeah. there. Still a lot of time, though. Granted, 28.4 seconds left, but that was a huge play from Akeem Silla. Yeah, that could be a game-saving play, but Worthing still have plenty of time. You know, they're only down what, by three points. It's one possession game. I <laughs> did tease overtime, but you just never know in course, this game. But. Absolutely, and of course, Akeem Silla did something very similar in the lockout season across the road at Durrington High School when playing for the Thames Valley Cavaliers with the game on the line. He blocked a potential game-tying layup from Cameron Hildreth, and at the other end, Taylor Johnson went ahead and scored. So. It's a very similar sort of scenario there, but this time, Hemel, he's playing for Hemel, 28.4 seconds remaining, and he might have just won the game for the Storm, but a lot of basketball to be played. Yes, yeah, 17 the shot clock. How quickly do they shoot it? Worthing still have it. A lot of time on the shot clock, as you mentioned, Niall. Here is Arasol. Inside, Jackman, a three off the backboard. Still has it though. Arasol puts it in. Yeah, only 20 seconds, so they need to foul. They'll send Hemel to the line, or if they can get a steal. Shot clock is turned off. Game. Well, it's a one point game, and Sam Newman, usually one of the most reliable foul shooters, is going to the foul line. Yeah, they wanted the three. They had to settle for the two, but even if Hemel make both free throws, it's Still a three-point game with 19 seconds to go. It's absolutely fantastic, but pressure on Newman. Sam Newman, an 80% foul shooter for the season, makes the first. 19.2 seconds remaining in this epic encounter between these two top-of-the-table rivals. Newman ices both. Three-point lead. Shot clock is off. Blaine goes inside. Blocked by Aqua Davis. Huge block. Arasol foul suave. What a block from Charles Aqua Davis. Let's look at the replay. Just the drive up there. And look how late he launches, but able to get up there and deny the opportunity. And then Worthing forced to foul again. And Suave just needs to uh, make at least one of these free throws. 9.4 seconds remaining. Suave at the line. A 76% oh. foul shooter misses the first. And there's a few Hemel fans in the crowd who had their hands on their heads there. He's got to make this one. Suave he does. makes it. It's a two-possession game. Ball is nearly turned over. Foul has been called. The shot clock, excuse me, the game clock was still rolling, so the they've got to put some seconds back on the game clock. But that actually helps Worthing because, obviously, if they'd gone run down the floor, a few more seconds come off the clock. They get fouled. They're going down straight to the line the other end. And four-tenths of a second has been put on. So 7.4 seconds remaining, and Afiz Abdul against his former club to keep Worthing in it. Abdul strings the first. High arc on that, but all net. And uh, Drew Spinks wants a timeout if this free throw goes in. Afiz Abdul splits the free throws just so he could get the possession back but Hemel fastest to react possession arrow Worthing but possession arrow goes to Worthing four seconds left oh. 
Drew Spinks has no. wiped off his timeout. Yeah, he only wanted it if the uh, free throw had gone in, he sided against it. So, oh, what an end to the game, four seconds. What a fantastic advert for National Basketball League Division One. Final possession, four seconds left. It goes to Abdul. Abdul misses, rebound, Silla. That's game. Silla secures the win at the end with that rebound. But we thought it might come down to the final possession, John, and it sure did. We got Referees just want to clarify something. I think there might be time on the f clock, is there? They just want to check the clock. The referee's going to signal to Ziff come back on the floor. So they just want to. So they've called a foul wow. on Orland Jackman. If it's with time, it's... and that's Jackman's fifth foul. But the game is as good as over because that's an offensive foul. Then I take it if they're staying down there, free throw. Sorry, John. So Orlan Jackman is done. There's one tenth of a second remaining. So you've got to put one. Yeah, you, you've got to put one tenth of a second back on the clock. So there'll be a lineup as they uh, change this season. And Shegs Sudunki is coming into the game for the first time tonight. As Akeem Silla will put the icing on the cake for the Storm. Yeah, 23 points for him, 13 rebounds. So tonight, the Hemel Storm have sent a message to the Worthing Thunder. A statement has been made. Worthing Thunder taste defeat for the first time this season. For the Hemel Storm, they go to 9-0. First blood drawn here at the Worthing Leisure Centre. Hemel Storm come out 100 to 95 victors. Aaron Rye with a monster performance, 30 points, 16 rebounds. Hakeem Silla with a double double in his own right, 22 points and 13 rebounds for the Thunder. Hafiz Abdul with 24. They were led actually by Andre Arasol with 28 points. Orlan Jackman with 15 and 12. But it's all about the orange of the storm tonight as they defeat the Thunder in a fantastic game, a great advert for NBL Division One basketball. Uh, it's just great that you're able to get the NBL live cameras in for this game. We had a feeling it's going to be a good one when you've got two unbeaten teams, so much on the line. And of course, these teams, as you've mentioned before, could meet what, three more times at least yeah, this season? Absolutely. So, you know, <laughs> you're in for a great campaign. And they're just showing why Division One is so strong when you've got two teams like this just going at it all through the game. Like I said, it's a, just a wonderful advert for National League basketball. Absolutely. And as Hemel continue to celebrate, the storm claps louder than the thunder here tonight. Hemel Storm draw first blood over the Worthing Thunder. They go to 9-0 for the Thunder. It's a first loss of the season. An early Christmas present for Hemel as they go top of the NBL Division I standings. My thanks to Niall Gray for what has been an incredible evening of basketball here on the South Coast. I'm John Hobbs. Good evening and have a Merry Christmas, everybody.